Hello friends and welcome to Virtual Strangers 48. I'm your host Wes, with me as always, my good friend Roots. Roots, is it just me or does it seem like it's been like a year since we did a show? It does actually, it feels like a long time because usually we're running back to back to back or I don't know, it seems like it's been it's been a long time. I don't know what's happening, time is very wonky right now. It is. It is. It seems like uh, forever ago we were on here announcing our uh, giveaway winners uh, and and just being giddy over the uh, Half-Life Alex news. But uh, I don't know. It seems like a lifetime ago. And, and while I'm on the subject and while I brought it up, uh, Durbin Brown, Stan, Sandy Strachan, uh, last call, guys. Claim your prize. Uh, I'm going to wait another week or so, and if those two keys go unclaimed, we're going to draw another number, right? Yeah, who's excited, man? There's some people watching right now that are voting against Sandy and, and Durbin, man. Don't fucking put shit in. We want our game. Um, that is exciting. Who knows? Things can change just like that, right? Yeah, well... Um, you, you, you can well maybe I don't, I don't want to come down on them too hard for not watching you know they might be in quarantine or something somewhere you know mm, let's hope not maybe they thought somebody already got the game and they just thought oh man i lost i feel bad for sandy now sandy and durbin but uh yeah. well you know. I, I did reply to their you know their original comment that they were a winner told them how to claim their their key and uh nothing crickets mm, roots. makes me wonder uh, so do you think there's a chance that i might have won like a quest or something at some point and i didn't get back and i <laughs> missed out on my quest wes i could have had a free quest yeah it's yeah. crazy too because most of those type of giveaways they give you two or three days uh i'm giving these people two weeks yeah it's so, plenty uh, of time I'm, a... yeah i'm gonna get on there i'm gonna leave them another comment last call for alcohol you know what uh What's funny about the time, and we just discussed this today in Bridge Crew, um, me, myself, Scion, and uh, gaming science teacher, there was a part in a mission where we had two minutes left where we had to stay alive, and these Klingons were flying everywhere, and we were, it, it was, I even made the point, I said, man, time is flying by in this fucking world, but this two minutes... It seemed like it was the two minutes from hell. <laughs> we didn't make it, Wes. We died. We didn't make it. It was very sad. Well, they say time flies when you're having fun, Roots, and that tells me all I need to know <laughs> about Star Trek Bridge Crew. I oh. think I made the right decision not picking that one up. No, we need we need somebody to come in, Wes. We need you to come in and be the helm because Gaming Science Teacher was originally supposed to be engineer, and so we couldn't get a fourth, so she jumped to helm. And so now I'm captain and engineer, and it is not fucking working, man. Jumping back and forth, and I've got people screaming at me for this, and this power, and this needs repaired, and I'm still trying to make the calls of the captain. And, uh, yeah, it's crazy. It's definitely See, a fun enough game. of that stuff at work. I, I don't need that in my <laughs> life. I, I go to VR because I don't want to work. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess if you're fixing stuff and... I don't know. It's it's a good game, but uh, it's definitely one that you need four people. At least where we're at, we're getting pretty far in the the missions, and um, it's getting hard. So, yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. That's right. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's talk a little VR roots. You know, um, business is starting to pick up, isn't it? I mean, after Christmas, we had that lull there where uh, no real game announcements for about six weeks. And now it seems like it's really starting to pick up every week. Uh, you know, there's a few more announcements than the last week. And we've gotten to the point now where, I mean, the majority of our show is new game announcements, right? I know. Making the thumbnail was so easy this week. I was like, I just, I was like, wow, these are, because usually I'm looking at the games and I'm trying to look and see, okay, what's the best game in there? And is there a thumbnail? And, and like this one, it was like, they're all games that I wanted to put on there. And every one of them had a really good thumbnail and, uh, it was just good. So yeah, I had to uh, eliminate some games to, to pick four for the thumbnail. All right. Absolutely. And some good PlayStation anyway. VR games in there, which is good, right? They finally are getting a bone that dude, whoever commented on the last video, <laughs> God bless you, but you can, you can relax. Now you got some PlayStation VR games. We're going to be positive today. It's not all going to be quest. And everybody will be happy. 
So yeah, that guy, um, that guy's pretty cool. We went back and forth a little bit. Uh, I think we have ourselves like, um, so you know, it's it's a prevalent thing, right? We we've got a few of these in our community. These people that are just sick to death of quest and what what really struck me out about this guy normally it's like uh you know pc master race types mm. that are hating on quest uh you don't see it a lot from psvr uh community but uh this guy a hardcore psvr at least he came off that way well what's funny is is he w wasn't happy about us all these game announcements for quest and these are all games that like a year ago, he was probably giddy as a, a schoolgirl, you know, because they were coming out for PSVR, right? Um, I don't know. I'm just happy for all the uh, platforms. I'm happy that he's getting some new games, and uh, and we're all happy now. So. Yeah, and as far as the, the ports things goes, you know, we were kind of making the point that Quest is getting so many ports now that, you know, they're getting all these great ones, right? Like PSVR did a, a year ago. Uh, PSVR is actually getting ready to go into another stretch with some fairly solid ports. And uh, I think the one we're going to talk about a little bit later is one of them. Mm, yeah, I agree. Uh, but before we get into all that, let's talk just a teensy weensy little bit of hardware. Uh, I want to talk about Valve Index and mainly because of the... Um, you know, the byproduct of all of the Half-Life Alex hype uh had pretty quickly put valve index onto back order and then it went uh to where they weren't even taking orders anymore and then coronavirus hits and uh it seems like there was going to be complete gridlock with valve index and some doubt the whether or not they would even be able to fill their orders that they had already taken uh but apparently we found out just this past week roots that uh they're going to be able to fill those orders. Apparently they are, or at least are in the process of being filled right now because uh, tomorrow, Monday, March 9th, 10 a.m. Pacific time, people are going to be able to buy Valve indexes again. Mm, you get your order ready? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, me neither. No. You know what's funny about this, Wes, is I, as I'm, I'm watching the Reddits like I always do, and people are like, oh, man, thank God. It's out there. We're getting our index and everybody's of the same belief, man. We're all getting our index. And I'm thinking you're not all getting your index. I'm thinking probably less than 10% of everybody in the Reddit is probably going to get their index. I don't know, man. This is very, very ambiguous post. You know, it says it's coming out. They're going to sell out on Monday. But if, if we remember the last time they hit, it was not a full day it was like fucking 10 minutes 15 minutes and we've had all this hype um all these people flooding into vr all these half-life alex fanatics that have to have the best headset that was made for the game they want to play but they're all gonna get it and i'm gonna enjoy watching everybody melt down on <laughs> monday afternoon then that's just the sadistic guy i am because it's gonna be a shit show there's going to be a lot of people that are happy as hell, and there's going to be a lot of fucking pissed off people. And my biggest hope is that um, we don't see the scalping. You know, you know, a lot of people are hoping that uh, there's not that they're doing something to mitigate against people buying up multiples of this uh, and then just selling them. Because um, if I had yeah. thousands of dollars, that's what I would be doing. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be multiples to sell roots because you can tell by the tone of the statement from valve that uh you know they're trying to temper expectations right off the top hmm. uh uh we do expect available stock to sell out monday due to high demand so all purchases fulfilled beyond this initial quantity unnamed by the way initial quantity uh will be fulfilled in the order which they are received as supplies increase over the coming days weeks no over the coming months mm. they say so uh what i feel like's happening here roots uh they've probably got a handful of headsets they probably had these headsets when they quit taking orders you know or at least a good portion of them and uh you know they made a promise they made a promise that uh, they would be taking orders uh before half-life alex releases and i feel like this is their way to say see we didn't lie 
by opening up orders for an hour one day, you know, two weeks before the game releases. What are your thoughts on selling the Rift S in a week or two or right before it, you know, for a premium price, like 700 bucks or whatever, if you could get it, and then buying Odyssey Plus and dealing with the jank for a while and then... I don't know. I think I think I could make some money, but I don't know if it'd be worth it or not. You know, the same thought crossed my mind uh, uh, a couple of days ago. I was thinking to myself, would I sell my quest if somebody offered me like eight hundred bucks for it tomorrow or a thousand dollars? I think I would. I think you should. You know, <laughs> I think I would too, because you're not changing your experience at all, right? I mean, you're still getting to play VR, so right, and you just buy I another am. one. Right, I've got. That's the thing. I've got enough headsets here. I could sell a couple and still be good. You know what I mean? Um, How would your family feel about it? That's their go-to. They would not be happy. <laughs> uh, you know, to be let's be honest. If I had to sell one, I'd probably have to sell that Rift S. Yeah. Uh, because everybody's loving the the Quest, and I can always uh, CB one. Which it. I'm going to. I'm I'm going to get a link cable, and uh, I'm not going to get the official one, but. I've been researching. Uh, you you can get a depending on what you want for twenty to thirty dollars, you can get a serviceable uh, generic cable. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, sounds good. Now I've been thinking about it too. I'm like, man, this because you know, like I said, that the, the indexes aren't out there, the Rift S's aren't out there, and when people can't get the index, um, they'll gladly jump to the Rift S, at least the people that I believe, you know, the hardcore Half-Life Alex fans, um, you know, but uh, I guess only time will tell. Yeah, and, you know, we could be in a situation where uh, the, there actually is some stock coming back, not just with the Valve Index, but uh, uh, I, I've been hearing reports that uh, people in Europe are, are able to, to buy them again here and there, and at my Walmart, just yesterday, uh, they had two of the uh, 128 gigabyte mm. variety in stock. Oh wow! So uh, that's crazy. Uh, yeah. So they are. You said you saw it on Best Buy not that long ago, right? Yeah, they come and go. You know, I usually watch them. You know, depends on where I'm at financially, and uh, when I don't have money for it, I don't want to see it. Fuck that headset. Okay. So. You always you always look for them when you can't buy them. Yeah, no, I don't know. Either way, I I shouldn't look at them because I right now I I just can't buy them. <laughs> right, it's just not happening. Every time I think I'm getting to a place where okay, I can get my head above water, something slaps me down. So, but anyway, uh, you know, good timing, uh, probably purposeful timing. Let's hold our stock. Uh, for when demand is highest, right? And uh, it gives them a, a good excuse to take some more orders right before Half-Life Alex comes out. You know, we uh, we had the conversation not long ago. Um, is this virus going to uh, basically stop the momentum of VR? And we made a, a pretty good case for that, how it could happen. You know, people's interest, uh, people losing interest before they're able to get their hands on a headset but you know just the opposite could happen as well because as um as the world becomes more conscious of this contagious virus that's going around uh vr is becoming more and more a handy thing because uh, vr is the best way that we have to use technology to be in the presence of people without actually being in the presence of people. So as we start to see these trade shows uh, move from the live arena into the virtual arena uh, over the next year or two, uh, I mean, if people are going to be able to attend events like that in VR, that in itself would be a system seller, right? Yeah, yeah, especially if you could, like, buy tickets to stuff. Yeah, I'd love to go to, like, a, to actually be there at, like, a GDC or something in VR. Um, have a presence, you know, but, uh, you know, and then, then you don't have to worry about all the sickies either. So, so that's the thing, right? So, uh, the virus indirectly, uh, could actually help VR by, by creating a new need for it and a new demand for it. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, um, even for businesses, you know, if they can get to the point where it's, 
you know, viable to have a company meeting in, in VR, you know, I mean, they're already doing conference calls, a lot of people working from home. So. Yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred percent. So it's going to be interesting to watch and see what kind of effect it has. If any at all, it may just negate itself. You know, uh, the gamers may lose interest at the same time that the, uh, that the enterprise world uh, takes interest. And uh, I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, we, we kind of made it past that critical mass now. We're in the public consciousness, and that that can't be undone. You know, people are going to want it. As long as, uh, you know, the people who have been investing in the platform up until this point, as long as they keep investing and we keep getting these uh, – kinds of games and experiences and uh overall software innovation uh i feel like the demand even if it does wane for a little while it's going to come back in a big way so do you think it's do we where uh software is where it's at as far as driving the uh, platform forward i know there's <laughs> anthony brings it up on every interview as he wants to he wants to push that it's the hardware and i'm just telling you anthony right now it's not it's the software that needs to advance um, but you know, cause I was just thinking if this game, if this game comes out, which I, I don't think this is going to happen, but if, if it comes out and for some reason it just doesn't live up to the hype that could kill VR in my opinion, because so many people are hyped, especially people outside of VR coming in and then having it be shit, which, um, like I said, that's like 0.01% chance of happening. I'm pretty sure it's going to be amazing, but. Well, we, well, we. I mean, it's funny that you say that because we have a laundry list of examples. Uh, pretty much everything that that's happened to uh, kill the the uh, the motivation of the VR community, uh, it's all been based around hype, and we have example after example after example where hype has uh, has pretty much ruined people's opinions of things. And uh, we're going to take a closer look at that on the Monday show, actually. And uh, so you guys be sure to tune into that. It's a very pertinent uh, topic, especially these days as the, the hype surrounding Half-Life Alex has reached biblical proportions. Yeah, that's the most hype I've ever seen for any game, probably in a decade for me anyway. So, All right. so could it possibly live up to it? Uh, we're going to examine that. And what are the consequences if it doesn't? We're going to examine that as well. This week on the Monday show, be sure, uh, if you haven't al already, of course, to subscribe and click the notification bell so you will know when the Monday show is getting ready to go live. Here's a little um, secret for those of you new to the channel. Not always on Monday. Sometimes <laughs> the Monday show is on Tuesday. Sometimes it's on Wednesday. You know, who knows? It could happen directly after this show. Because that's how we roll. Yeah, Monday show on Tuesday is, is always a, a favorite. So, Yeah, people love the late edition of the Monday show. Yeah. Anyway, that's enough uh, talk about hardware and the VR platform. You know, that, that those type of conversations are left to the other guys. What we do on this show, Roots, is we talk games. And... Um, you know, it was on the Discord over the last few days where somebody kind of brought up the notion of what my most anticipated games of the year may be. And uh, as I was thinking through this and, and you know, how I was going to approach this conversation, it came into my mind, this title that everyone had forgotten about. But it's one of my most anticipated titles, but it's been so quiet. In development for so long we haven't heard anything about it that i think people have forgotten about folia dear father and i just said this to you the other day we we watched the original trailer you remember it was like last week we watched the original trailer for this game and uh you know we talked about people have forgotten about how cool and awesome this this horror game looks this upcoming uh, flat slash vr horror game looks and then what happens a few days later uh, not only do we get this awesome new trailer, but uh, we get a Steam page. So apparently uh, this thing's right around the corner, Roots, and I cannot be more excited. Uh, well, maybe a little bit for Half-Life Alex, but not a lot. Uh, what about you? What do you think about this new trailer? It looks pretty good. It looks pretty good for sure. 
Yeah, I, uh, I, I like the lighting, and it looks like um, everything seems to just look pretty, uh, um, just very good as far as the immersion level. I don't know. Yeah, I got this feeling from it that it's going to uh, try to recreate that Resident Evil style of game where, where they kind of uh, overload you with creep factor, and then all of a sudden you're in a violent fight for your life out of nowhere. And uh, that's kind of the feeling I got from this trailer. It kind of, you know, it's a four-minute trailer, and it kind of eases you into it. But uh, right around this part here, you start to see the creep start to take hold. And uh, by the end of it, it's pretty uh, high test. Yeah, it makes me wonder what the um, the audio is going to be like in there, because that's really what sets the, uh, the tension in these games, right? It's all the sounds and creaks and weird... Like I think of um, Resident Evil Seven when you go down into that basement and you hear you're going through all the tar baby shit and you you can hear or whatever that noise is and it just you know man I don't want to be down here man those things I don't know man that game still haunts me Wes yeah it's a, it's a pivotal thing when you talk about VR horror titles uh, the sound often is just as uh, important as the visuals are. Because you can't see a lot anyway in a good horror game. Everything's dark. And you're, you're basically trying to rely more on your sound to, to determine where any threat may come from. And it basically, if done correctly, keeps you on the edge of your seat if you're playing seated, of course. And lighting in this looks amazing, huh? Now the way that shadow looked by, I could just imagine myself creep down there and seeing it go by. Um, I don't know if I want to play this anymore Wes I'm scared it looks it looks spooky <laughs> yeah I think this thing looks amazing and that's the thing the real game machine is the developer here uh, this is an indie dev uh, and I, I would be calling shenanigans on this and saying there's no way that it could possibly look this good but they've been they've been at it for a while on this game we heard about this game a long time ago and uh, I was starting to worry about it because it had been so long since uh, we'd really seen or heard anything from these guys. Yeah, well, we, we're getting to the age where um, indie devs are putting out stuff that blows me away, and uh, it's awesome. I mean, who doesn't want to see that rotten corpse right there? Probably has coronavirus. That's my bet. bet. I don't know. Oh, God, I mean, oh God, dude. Oh, right in your face, dude. Yeah, I think this, this definitely looks like a winner to me, for sure. All right, uh, anyway, this is scheduled for release in Q1 2020. Uh, this game puts you in the shoes of Marcus Pitt, a young man whose claim to fame... Uh, wait a minute, I'm not reading that. Uh, I'm reading from an article here that says his claim to fame was that his parents work at a university. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what, that man. That makes sense. You know, yeah, dude, because... Like nothing says strutting around like my parents work at a university, <laughs> you know, like I am just up there, dude. Oh, that is weird. Uh, no, I'll go ahead and paraphrase what you need to know about the story here. Uh, you play the role of this Marcus Pitt character. Um, his parents are disease researchers. Mm. They're scientists who work at a university and uh, he loses touch with them. And then when he goes to campus, to find out what's happened to them, pretty much the campus is desolate and wiped out, as you can see here. Mm. And uh, basically, you're going to be searching through this campus, trying to find your mother and father, and all sorts of terrifying shit is going to unfold. Well, the story already is like 10 times better than most of these type of games, you know, because it's already gripped me. It's intriguing and coming out the the time it is now man like I, I could be going to a campus two months from now living this coronavirus uh, probably not but <laughs> let's hope not anyway right university of wuhan yeah let's hope not <laughs> wuhan you yeah i don't know if they have wuhan uh, you. yeah i don't know man uh, i don't know um so yeah th they have a steam page up for it now you can wish list it uh today um Here's the question, Roots. This is a flat game with VR mode. Uh, they're targeting this for Q1. As you know, Q1's about over with. Um, so we're, we're going to be getting this fairly soon. Uh, but it's still question marks 
uh, as to whether or not we're going to get VR support from launch. Uh, I haven't heard this question answered directly, and uh, so I think someone needs to be asking it. Maybe maybe I should ask the uh, developer myself, Mr. Uh, Mirko. What's his last name? Marco. Hello. Scarici. Scarici. Okay. Uh, Marco. You got to give us the VR support, brother. We need it day one. Please. This game looks so awesome. Yeah, it would be kind of a bummer if it came out and didn't have it out right off the bat, which is a good, good possibility. Like you said, we're right at the end of the uh, quarter here, so we're r running out of time. Yeah, I, I would think that VR wouldn't be too, um, too far behind the full release, basically because... The, the majority of the people that are hyped for this game are VR players. And I don't think that this guy is uh, blind to that fact. I mean, he he's he's on uh, Twitter. He's fairly active on social media. Uh, so I think he knows who is hyped for his game and who isn't. And uh, it's, it's all about the VR love. Uh, it's people like me with headsets and iron constitution uh that are looking forward to playing this yeah looks good yeah it looks awesome it's, it's absolutely uh one of my top 10 most anticipated uh releases of the year maybe even in my top five it, this this is right down my my alley is it um built from i mean obviously it's not built from the ground up for vr but is it going to have hand presence or is it going to be controller type like resident evil or do you know I do not know, and quite honestly, that's not that big of a deal to me. I, I'm good either way. Yeah, I'm pretty much am too. I mean, obviously, I want to have hands. I mean, I want to look down and see my hands, but um, if anything, just for the video, beginning of the video, you know? Yeah, right, right. So. Now, uh, of course, you know, in a perfect world, it would be full immersion VR mode, you know, with, with six off hand presence. Uh, but it, if it's not, I'm not going to be terribly disappointed. I just want a, a great horror game. You know, I said it last week when we were talking about Lies Beneath. Uh, VR does horror so well, but it seems like, you know, we're still waiting on that collection of great horror games. We've got lots of good ones, some very good ones, but only one or two great ones. And uh, we... Uh, you know, while there's a lot of horror games, uh, we certainly are, are starved for great horror games. And uh, this looks like it has the potential to be a great one. Do you think there's a possibility that overall, across the board, devs are holding back to some extent because of the media, because you're actually in there? Like, there's some fucked up, really creepy shit out there for either movies, flat games, or whatever that i think if you brought into vr it might traumatize some people and i mean i i'm not saying not to bring it in because i want to see that shit in there um but i feel like maybe some devs are like yeah we we can't do that we can't go that far uh, we don't want to kill anybody in vr um uh, what are your thoughts on that yeah i i, I hope not <laughs> hopefully <laughs> you know these filmmakers have had the courage to make these these movies Hopefully there are game developers out there with similar balls and uh, they have a vision. I mean, the, some of the images I've seen of this game have been pretty disturbing. So uh, this might be the one. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Uh, Wes just threw the gauntlet down to all the uh, devs out there that make horror ga games. Grow some balls and put it out there. No, keep the balls and put it out there. So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, when you think about horror movies, there's been so many, like, very disturbing ones that would, you know, that would work great if they were to be adapted into a, a VR game. I, I think of uh, As Above, So Below, off the top of my head. I think of uh, the original Saw. How great would something mm -hmm. like Saw be in VR? Or um, Hostel. You know, I mean, Hostel was friggin' disturbing. I mean, it... it it, it leaves a mental impression that, that never seems to go away. But in VR, I mean, how visceral would uh, it be to experience something like Hostel? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to experience it, but I, 
I think for people that um, really love horror and want to push it, I think, yeah, absolutely. You know? So, yeah, that's uh, Folia Deer Father coming Q1, they say. Now, uh, with an active Steam page, I cannot wait for this one, Roots. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have it soon, and hopefully it'll support VR from launch. Yeah, it'll be amazing. Hopefully it scares the hell out of you. It makes you think uh, Resident Evil 7 what? Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping so, too. That's the that that's why I love VR horror so much, because it has this physical and mental effect on you like nothing else. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Folia, dear father, not the only VR horror game we've got news on this week, Terminus. Uh, which was a, a game we learned about back in January as they launched a um, a, a free demo on SideQuest. Uh, we've just learned that Terminus is getting ready to launch a Kickstarter. Um, the uh, Kickstarter will begin on March 17th, and along with it, uh, they will also launch a new demo featuring the game's prologue uh, on their website they outline their reasons for starting a kickstarter for terminus um, and this is their quote this says a big project implies funds for terminus we have a lot of ambitions and we have the technical ability to fulfill these ambitions the lack is on the financial side so um they sound pretty confident don't they yeah yeah it sounds like they um they've got a vision and uh, I guess if you like um, this type of game, it'd be something to invest in, right? Yeah, and I mean, uh, they may actually do fairly well because, again, this is a quest game we're talking about here. And sorry, quest haters out there, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some quest games too. We're full-service VR here. Um, but, uh, again, another one of those uh, Resident Evil-style uh, horror games that... We all love so much where you're you're stealthily, you know, rummaging through, trying to collect items, trying to conserve ammo, and basically just survive. Um, I haven't played this demo, Roots, but I have watched some footage of it, and uh, it looks like another one of those atmosphere builders, you know, tension builder games. Uh, and for something that's free on SideQuest, it actually looked pretty good. Yeah, yeah, it definitely looks uh, different for sure. Um, so I guess what's the premise behind the story? Do you know? Uh, yeah, I think I took that. Well, at least I have the uh, the premise from the uh, the demo that was out. We don't know what the 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 entire game is going to be based on, but the initial alpha demo from January sees you explore Paris after an invasion has swept the city. Uh, the demo sees you sneak past large black clouds of mist that patrol the environment as you navigate a maze of subway tunnels to find an exit. So here I am pining away for As Above, So Below, a movie where you go into the catacombs under Paris. Uh, something similar here as you try to navigate dark subway uh, tunnels to, uh, to escape. But uh, it just says here that a, an invasion has swept the city. Hmm. I wonder what kind of invasion, Roots. Yeah, me too. Alien. Could be a zombie. Could be, yeah. I don't know. Could, could be, be Nazi bunch, zombies. Yeah, it could be a bunch of Richard Simmons. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you definitely want to uh, run. You know, watch your step then mm. because uh, you'll be sweating to the oldies before yeah. you know it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, not a lot to say here about Terminus uh, other than it looks cool. And uh, I just wanted to kind of get the word out there on the Kickstarter and just let you guys know, those of you who do have a quest, you can still get this demo. It's still up on side quest. So, uh, you know, now's the time. We've got a, another week or so before the uh, Kickstarter launches. Now's the time to find out if that's something you may want to invest in. Apparently, uh you know, I can't speak to the full ability of these developers, but what they've built so far looks pretty solid, and they certainly seem confident that they're going to be able to bring a, a big, ambitious horror game 
to the Oculus Quest. And, uh, you know, that's all I need to hear. Yeah. Uh, you've got my support. Yeah, sounds good. All right. So why would anybody want to go into Kickstarter? Well, that's something we could ask the developers of Zenith. Uh, as you know, Zenith is a, uh, a cyberpunk style VR MMO role playing game inspired by anime and Japan role playing game classics. Uh, Zenith from day one has seemed like an ambitious project uh, to create a living, breathing world where players can explore, go on adventures with others, fight enemies, and craft items. Uh, Roots, when we saw this um, Zenith back a few months ago when they launched their Kickstarter, it seemed almost too good to be true, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. So um, I guess is it is it too good to be true, or is this uh, is this actually happening? You know, I mean, uh, you said they were, were they did the Kickstarter not too long ago, right? So they obviously they got enough money. Everything's uh, is good and and uh, looking good. Looks like right. Yeah. Well, again, this is another one of those. I mean, we've we've got a bunch of these big ideas for MMO games. Uh, this being one of the best looking that I've seen, not just from a visual standpoint, but from the uh, just the concept, uh, the details that they gave us. Uh, it was one of these. They they already had funding for this game. They 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 went to Kickstarter to get additional funding to make it uh, the best that it can be, and they had a successful Kickstarter. So uh, yeah, I, as time goes on. Um, I'm becoming more and more confident that this game may actually turn out to be what we hoped it would be. Yeah, see, I'm looking at, like, all of these MMOs, like Orbis and, and like, this type of stuff. Um, if it's going to really want to get my attention, if it's going to want to suck me in personally, it needs to have a specific healing classes. It needs to, you know what I mean? I need to be able to keep people alive as they're fighting shit. Um, cause I don't want to fight shit. I want to, I want to heal you. I want to keep you alive while you've, you know, that's, that's part of the, the whole package is you've got the different classes and stuff. And most of these games focus on having multiple people together, killing stuff. And that's great. That's just not what I'm looking for in an MMO. Um, so hopefully they'll have some healing as well. Um, or at least when the, the first one that does that, I think that it'll really blow up, you know? So. Well, we should know more about it soon, uh, because one of the uh, one of one of the uh, rewards for people who back the Kickstarter is that they would get uh, pre-alpha access to the game, and apparently uh, they have developed a pre-alpha build that is going to be made available to backers on the twenty-first of March. So. Another week and a half or so, Roots, uh, we should find out a whole lot more about what uh, what they're building here. Nice. Well, see, I don't, I don't, um, I didn't back the Kickstarter, so now I'm sad. I want to, um, I want to be able to uh, play it. it. Does look pretty cool though, right? Color wise uh, and yeah, I think it looks pretty, pretty awesome to be quite honest. And uh, uh, you know, the, the thing about this is, this is supposed to be. Uh, a huge world that they're building and really that's what i'm uh that's the idea that you know i've never been much of an uh mmo player to begin with but i do like to explore and when when um uh, when we look at the prospect of these big you know dreamlike fantasy worlds uh you know i, f I do find that intriguing and I, I think this one looks pretty good yeah maybe it'll get you sucked into mmos this is it. This is the oh, one. I hope not. I don't have time for that, Jack. Uh, I got too much other going on. Get me, get me hooked on one of these things, and it would be the death of our channel for sure. Yeah, for sure. Well, I don't know. It would just probably, our content would just change to covering all Zenith all the time. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool. So hopefully it'll, uh, it'll live up to what it's supposed to. Yeah, basically, um, they have a similar idea to... Uh, what was the one that came out on Vibe not long ago? Uh, Nostos? Goodness. Nostos, yes. Uh, they, they have a very similar idea to Nostos. Uh, but, you know, 
Whereas Nostos is broken and janky, uh, we're hoping that Zenith won't be. Crossing fingers, because it is Nostos is janky. At least it was janky. I need to go back in. All right. Uh, as the development continues, more headsets will be added to the roster. Uh, the uh, the pre alpha is only for Rift and Rift S. Uh, but as development continues, they're going to add in Steam VR and Oculus Quest, and that's where things get really interesting, right? Because uh, as good as this thing looks, uh, this is supposedly going to run on Quest. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't see it, but we'll see, right? They seem to work their magic on these things, you know? Yeah, well, I'll, I'll never doubt, you know, the uh, the ability of a talented developer with the Oculus Quest again because I've already been amazed so many times over with that thing, and people are getting better at it. Like, you know, the initial games were impressive enough, but as time goes on, uh, they seem to be getting better and better and better the games that are coming out for it. So. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so that's Zenith coming soon for Kickstarter backers only, but I'm sure that uh, quite a few of those Kickstarter backers are going to have YouTube channels, so we're going to get to learn more about Zenith very soon, I'm sure. Uh, that brings us to Archgate. This is a new game that was just announced for PCVR. Uh, Archgate Pride and Accomplishment is a VR exclusive title from Samdosoft. Uh, unlike other attempts at the VR MMO, such as Orbis Online, the game is played from a third person perspective that aims to marry in depth combat with social elements roots uh out of all these mmo games they keep throwing at us concepts for them um have we had another one that's been in third person no not that i know of and actually that i believe could work really well especially with what i was just talking about um because it would be difficult to heal uh depending on how you go like a lot of you know what i've done is you know raid heals and you're you're throwing heels on the ground that people need to stand in or you need to be able to see all the shit going on and if you were in a first person there's a reason why you don't go into first person in the middle of a raid because you need to see everything going on um so i would imagine this actually could work pretty well and it looks pretty good um as far as just the uh the characters there and the, you know the enemies and and that type of stuff and i i don't know i'm i'm a big i love mechanics you know and that was that's one of the best things about um mmos and 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 the fights and and all the shit going on and you gotta there's just different things that everybody needs to do to make it work and everybody works together and i just love it so uh, well if you know we've talked about you know we've been talking about these mmos and how ambitious some of these developers have uh have been when coming up with the concepts for these things uh I don't think I've ever seen such an ambitious idea for a VR MMO as this one. Uh, check out these original ideas. Um, all right, first of all, the game is set up in a dark fantasy world in which players can team up to take on quests. So it looks like, um, what was the game we played not, not too long ago together? Uh, Carnage Chronicles. Mm. This looks a lot like Carnage Chronicles to me, like the world and the art style. Um, but uh, I've got a quote here. Um, it says, We set out to challenge and improve the current status quo in the gaming industry on multiple fronts. Archgate introduces role play as a service, features permadeath regions, and places a, st a strong emphasis on both player individuality and reputation. Roots, they're selling this game as a subscription service so it's not like you're, you're buying the game uh and, and you're going to just jump in and, and play with whoever's on the server their vision of their game is uh that people are going to buy into it as a subscription service and there's only going to be so many players allowed like if their vision comes to fruition uh you're going to be lucky to get in the play mm. would they just have one server or 
I don't know, because like uh, that's kind of, I mean, it's kind of set up to where, you know, uh, MMO, at least World of Warcraft, is already kind of set up that way. You know, um, I don't know. It just seems like it'd be, it'd be uh, something they could do. I don't know. I yeah, mean, there's a there's a very specific reason that they're structuring it this way. Uh, one of the game's loftiest promises is that Sandosoft will employ game masters that can spawn enemies at will to give quests a more dynamic feel. The team also intends to use live actors to embody the game's NPCs. So uh, that's what your subscription fees are going to be paying for. Live actors to play the roles of the characters in the games. Uh, game masters who were watching you play and spawning enemies around you to make the game be less predictable and less like a game and more like a real life experience. Now, this is um, this would be groundbreaking enough if they were to be able to pull this off in a flat game, but to employ uh, strategies like this into something that's already as immersive as VR. Uh, I mean, if they pull it off, it could be next level, right? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, it makes me think of unders, the under presents though, you know, and they've talked about the live actors and they, you know, already are talking about, you know, hey, that's going to be the, around for a while, maybe not forever. Um, so I, it makes me nervous to have a game tied to continual hiring of people to act. Um, cause what happens if all of a sudden it doesn't do as well, or it's not, doesn't have as many subscriptions. And then all of a sudden you're, I mean, is it, a, is, are there options for non-actors? Will the NPCs not, you know, does the game just stop, um, without those people there? I like the idea of the game master because I've been, I've talked about that before on the show, as far as like a D and D type of game where, you know, one of the players is the D dungeon master and he's in VR and everybody else is in doing the quests and they're in VR, but the dungeon master gets to create shit in real time. Um, I think it would make more sense from if a player played that role than a game master that's employed. I mean, it sounds good, but I, I just, I have a, you know, I have a bad feeling. I just don't know. I don't know if it's going to, if, if we're at, if we're barely there already, for multiplayer and getting that i just don't know that there's going to be enough of a base to generate um the money for it i don't think i don't know maybe i'm wrong well this specifically um when they're talking about scale the, you know the scale of the subscriptions uh it is said to be quote in the order of thousands so they're not talking about this gigantic thing where there are thousands and thousands, thousands of people. Uh, you know, it's not too small, but it's not too big either. Um, and it's also, this isn't a 2020 release. This game is being promised for next year. Mm. So this is a 2021 game. Uh, could be 12, 18 months down the line before we see something like this. Uh you know, it is ambitious. I mean, we've never actually heard anybody try to do anything like this, uh, but they seem to be giving themselves uh, enough time to uh, to make a real go at it. Yeah, it looks amazing, and it sounds good, and um, if they can make it work, I think it'll it'll be really cool. Like you said, it's a, a full year away. Who knows where, where we'll be um, as far as headsets out there, so. Uh, quote, we won't need thousands of employees because the core systems like fighting for territory, politics, tournaments, and day-to-day -day gameplay is built to work on its own. The moderators are a cherry on top just to make it unpredictable. Also, we have a single shard server infrastructure and we will limit the maximum number of of subscriptions so that we always know we can provide high quality experience for the players in game. So basically what they're saying here is one that the game is going to be built to work on its own. So it's not going to be dependent upon the uh, live roles being played in it by either the game masters or the actors. But they're also saying that they're going to um, determine the, uh, 
they're going to maintain the quality of the experience by uh, curating the subscriber base and only keeping uh, uh, enough players, enough subscriptions active that they can handle. You know what I'm saying? So they just turn you away? Like, sorry, we've already got a thousand. <laughs> this is the no roots club, man. Sorry, we just can't have you in here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's at least it's it sounds like it can run on its own um, without the uh, without the game masters, which leads me to think I'm always going to think negative. But six months down the road, the game masters just aren't in there anymore. You know, they just told you it's not going to be there forever, or at least unless it's very successful. It's a cherry on top. Sometimes the cherry's not there anymore. Um, oh, man. But uh, no, uh, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna hope we've it's so far away and it looks really good. So, uh, well, my idea, I don't know that anyone could ever pull this off, at least in today's day and age. But assuming that they do, let's assume that they build their vision. Uh, I could see them putting a pretty lofty price tag on this, legitimately. I mean, like it would be worth, you know, a pretty substantial price tag to experience what they're uh what they're describing here yeah i wonder what the cost of the membership would be because i know it's like 10 15 bucks for most um you know type of games like this so i don't i would imagine it would be pretty expensive if they're planning on keeping the uh the player base small and employing these uh people to work in the world you know go into vr and uh, be a part of the world. Uh, I gotta imagine this probably would be a pretty expensive thing. Oh, yeah. Rightfully so. Again, yeah, depending on cost of the game, and but um, I can't see it being any more than what um, fifteen dollars would be the max. I would say just because no one's gonna pay 50, twenty bucks, thirty bucks a month. Um, they just you don't think you don't think they would if if they built what they described here, and it's got all of these different. You know all of these different things going oh. on. It's a of a, 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 uh, an experience uh, closer to living real life than anything else we've seen in in VR. Going uh, by subscriptions of every other MMO and Star Wars, World of Warcraft, whatever. The 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 sweet spot is ten to fifteen. I I just don't think anything going over that. Just because even though you're in the world and it's VR and it's amazing it's still a monthly subscription and people it's just a it's a huge chunk to expect people to pay and i just don't think that if it was over i would expect it to be about 15 dollars. but if, i mean if you got thousands of people that's a lot of money per month coming in you know so that's true that's true well time will tell i i wish them the best of luck uh you know way to think outside the box people yeah. i mean that's what we're always pining on here is that people need to have an original vision and with all of the uh the the mmos the concepts that people keep coming up with um you know very few of them have ever made it to market successfully uh and, and if they can bring this idea to market successfully uh i'll be thoroughly impressed man it makes orbis vr look like a turd right I mean, not yeah, I most think that I think that's do, what but... they're trying to do. Honestly, <laughs> they're trying to make Orbis look like a turd. Yeah, and well, they're doing a good job. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> well, yeah, um, I'm not going to shit on Orbis. I was about to start shitting on Orbis, but I've never played it, so I'm not going to do that. I've played it for like 20, 30 minutes in one of those competitions, and I was not impressed. I haven't played the new version, but I don't know. Asgard's effect, man. Anus. Anus VR. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, games and games and games and games and more games this week, Roots. Uh, let's talk about Unbinary. Uh, you know, we were just in the Museum of Other Realities the other day, and we were in Alex's sci-fi world, and we were really blown away and taken aback by it. And I remember making the comment to you, that I would totally play a game if it looked like this. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. That's what this looks like, right? I think we found our game roots. That, that above all, I mean, there's some interesting things about this game here. Uh, but most interesting to me is the art style. I think this thing looks pretty freaking cool. 
Yeah, it looks pretty cool just the way that everything is uh, working together as far as like that mask. It just, I, I don't know. Um, it just, uh, it's a very unique um, art style for sure. It looks like, the, the, not the, the characters, but the environments and stuff. It looks like somebody tried to go into Quill and draw like bone works or something. Or uh, maybe Boiling Steel or, or one of these futuristic looking games. Um, but uh, who would have thought that this, because um, this game actually was hand illustrated in Quill. Who would have thought that something like that could turn out this good? Nah, it just shows you what you can do with those type of, um, when we said it before, I mean, not only Quill, but Dreams. There's just so many different things. Like, this is what you're going to be seeing this type of stuff on um, PS5. As a matter of fact, I was watching a video of, of all, a lot of the games that are on Dreams, and a lot of them look kind of like this, you know, and you could go right into it and have put it in VR. Um, could be amazing. Now, what's the story behind this, or did they say... Or have they released anything on that? Um, so let's see here. This is developed by Brazilian-based game studio Ludact. Uh, the title is a physics-based... There we go with the Boneworks uh, comparisons again. It's a physics-based VR title that is entirely hand-painted uh, with the Quill software. Unbinary is said to be an adventure game where you are tasked to prepare Webby for her duty hmm. webby turn the page is the name of a super ai that was elected to rule the planet earth and needs to be audited so uh yeah so you're auditing webby who is the all-powerful ai that was elected elected mm. roots that's important mm. the ai was elected to rule the planet earth yeah i think she's or he or she or z um g or whatever <laughs> this robot is is uh not doing its job i'm gonna shut it down without even checking because i know i don't want ai ruling me but no this is that shows you that the, you know i've been seeing a lot of um things on reddit where people are asking you know where's our uh quest version of a physics game right this could easily be, I don't know if it's said for Quest, but it definitely not going to be graphically um, taxing. So uh, I could see it making on Quest, right? Wouldn't it be funny if this turned out to actually be Stress Level Zero's Project 4? Yeah, that would be funny. I do see in the notes that I don't see anything about Quest, though. The fuck, man? This is a Quest perfect physics game. Let's see it. Let's get it done. Well, maybe the developers of this game feel like the rest of us, and I speak for all of us when I say screw Quest, man. Yeah, fuck screw that. Screw that. Fuck, fuck that platform, dude. Yeah. yeah. I don't so have one. Sick so of it. It's easy for me sick to say. Sick of it. I'm sick of it, too. You know, I'm sick of all of it, man. All of this shit. Just flip my table over and get up, and I'm like, well, <laughs> fuck, man. Roots is pissed. Um, <laughs> uh, no, but no, you're right. This This is not uh for oculus quest this game is being uh scheduled for re release on october 21st not october i'm sorry august 21st oh God, for steam then. oculus and playstation vr yay yeah yeah we got another psvr game um excited <laughs> yeah another week or two and that's going to be way overblown because i know that I, i'm going to push it every second and this is this is the year of psvr now you know there's going to be a time pretty soon here where quest people are going to get sick of hearing of all the playstation vr games coming out right next year man 2021 it's yep. going to be a big one for psvr yep. um but as far as unbinary goes the title will contain seven physics enabled interactive levels allowing you to dive into the mysterious webby and realized the world is in some serious trouble when they told me that the uh planet had elected an ai uh i think that was our first clue right that the world was in some serious trouble yeah because i don't trust the ai you know it's smarter than me and it doesn't really line up with my goal my goal of living so you don't think that the ai shares your your morals yeah i think the ai totally is you know, this is what I always tell customers, you know, when at work and stuff, whenever I'm 
I say, I feel bad about killing the mice. Cause you know, you can tell the people feel, I really don't care, but you, they feel bad about it. And then I'll always say, follow with, you know, I, but I have this weird loyalty to humans for some reason, you know? Um, and, uh, that's how I feel. I have loyalty to humans for some reason. I distrust AI and, uh, yeah, I think the worst mistake that we ever made as a human race was naming Sophia and giving her human rights. And you will watch that to be proven right in the near future. So. Well, the good thing about Sophia and the good thing about Webby is that at least we are auditing yes. Webby. Yeah, right? we got that's the, the purpose of the game. Yeah, yeah, and maybe we'll find out that um, Webby is totally benign and loves us and just wants us a nice, wally future for humanity. I don't. Well, want you know, there's one, there is one way we could protect, like the nuke button, uh, from the all powerful AI. And all we would have to do is put up a single layer of security that says, pick out all the pictures of a bus. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you know, we're good. Yeah, I hate that shit. I don't want us to pick any more crosswalks, no more fucking street lights. Stop. Well, but apparently, it... uh, the AI or robots, uh, they don't have the ability to pick out buses and crosswalks and... Uh, yet cars yeah they're like yet. <laughs> yeah yet um but yeah that's yeah, definitely definitely uh on my mind i don't i don't trust webby but maybe if i get to know webby i'll be fine i guess the lucky luckily i'll get to auditor or i keep thinking it's a girl webby sounds like a girl's name right yeah webby okay. is well i mean unbinary so. yeah yeah i guess I, yeah look at ruth always, always always yeah z always wanted to Put some kind of gender on everything, Roots. What is wrong with well, you? The title of the game is unbinary, so mm, yeah. yeah, no gender, no gender pronouns here, please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, back to the actual game. Uh, obviously, the art style uh, is really cool. It's really unique. We haven't, I mean, we've seen kind of comic booky, cell shaded stuff. Never have we had a full game illustrated with quill i mean it's like people um it's like these uh people at loot act uh decided that they didn't want to wait on dreams that they were just going to do it in quill and they did it um but beyond that beyond the fact that it looks really cool uh are you interested in playing this kind of um i don't know it seems kind of like uh a, a, a fairly short physics-based puzzler well, it'll be interesting. You know, I'm a I'm a big believer. I just want to, the world can look as like this. I mean, I, I, I just got sucked into some weird comic book world where, you know, everything looks, you know, I, I think, what was that movie? Cool, cool. What was the na name of that movie back in the day where the guy got sucked into the, um, the movie? And you got Who Framed Roger Rabbit, all those type of games, right? Um, to where it's just you're getting sucked into a weird cartoony look looking world and I think that's what I think it'll it works I think it works better than people um, would give it credit for without going in and actually seeing it you know well well that's that's really the thing about when, when you talk about being in a world that looks like this uh, and it's the reason why we brought it up the other day when we were in the museum uh, I mean that alone is enough to make it worth checking out isn't it yeah yeah, especially if it's a, uh, you know, like I don't even, I'm not even put off by the fact that it's not um, a really long game or whatever, you know, because it's at some point I don't, and I don't think anybody wants this. Like you can't play all Asgard's Wraths. Like they all can't be 30 hours long, you know, at some point nobody has that much time and nobody wants to put that much time into any game or every game except for a main fan maybe as he just loves to, put time into games but um i you know i i just feel like uh i don't know i just feel like it's kind of we're kind of at that place i guess yeah I, i'm and i'm a i'm agree going to agree with you there not just from a uh a time perspective but just the general overall production perspective uh, i'm kind of starting to get to the point now where now that we've had the triple a games for a little while uh, i'm starting to go back and play some of the other stuff that while at the time when this stuff all was new, the, the AAA games were new, 
I, I didn't want to see any of these indie games at all. Uh, the Asgard's effect was taking full grip on me, but it's starting to wear off a little bit. Uh, I'm starting to see a place for those games again. Uh, it doesn't. Every game doesn't have to be Asgard's Wrath. There's lots of fun to be had in games like this. Yeah, yeah. As long as they're made well and they they feel good, um, you know, I don't care if it's you know that long or uh, you know very deep. This looks like it'd be pretty good. So. That's not what she said. Rick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's yeah, that's what she likes. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to bring it up because we were literally just talking about this the other day, how we would like to check out a game that looked like this. And again, much like with Folio, Dear Father, we talk about it and then poof, here it is, the world right is, into existence. The world is just watching our show and following suit. So, Yeah, well, they're watching our after hours stuff because th these are our personal conversations. Oh, that's creepy, dude. Yeah. It's the AI is really getting personal here. I don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, Z is creeping me out. <laughs> Damn you, Z. Bastard. <laughs> okay, so again, this is Unbinary coming to Steam, Oculus, and PlayStation VR on August 21st, 2020. Games and games and games and games and games roots. Let's talk about Good Goliath. Uh, you know, I read about this game... Uh, I read a little bit, and I was like, yeah, doesn't really sound like my bag. Then I watched the trailer, and then I read a little bit more about it. And the more I look at it, and the more I think about it, this looks like it could be some fun, right? Yeah, I, I was. it's funny you say that, because I was the exact same way. I was watching this. At first, I read it, and then I was started watching it. And I, my first instinct was like, what the hell is this? And then as I was watching him, like, grabbing people, throwing them, doing all sorts of weird shit, um... And it just getting the shark. I mean, all of this, I, I was just started laughing because it is just so, so much crazy shit going on. And I put myself in the game and thinking this actually looks like it would be a lot of fun to play, right? Like, um, I don't know. It just looks like it's just constant action after action after action. And, um, and it just looks very unique and who doesn't want to fight against the devil, right? Like I know I yeah. do. So yeah, me too. No man, this looks like uh, this looks like arcade gameplay at its finest. It's not your typical VR game. This looks like something you pump quarters into all night until you uh, spent your last dollar. You know. Yeah, it looks like it'd be very um, just seeing the maybe the the reactions of the people as they're flying at you and um, I don't know. It just it's just unique and it looks very good and um, I'm just kind of kind of psyched to see what. Uh, what um what it looks like actually being in it right there's another well, game coming I mean, yeah oh go ahead no i was just gonna say yeah because it looks i mean it's just based on looks alone looks uh, pretty high quality here from uh again another indie dev stepping up yeah yeah i like the way that shark looks and it's another game for playstation vr so people can get excited that uh this spring you won't be uh worried about all the the quest ports you'll be getting some playstation vr new games right that's very true spring spring 2020 playstation vr oculus and htc vive it says i wonder where's the valve support bro yeah it's weird when would you know it's kind of funny because you're starting to not hear that anymore like that's just not one of the things you hear about a game this is htc vive friendly who cares you, you know, know what it says to me Hmm. It says to me that this game's been in development for a long time. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's true. Because otherwise, it's a. You know, I read actually that the 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 Vive Pro is going away now. Now it's just going to be the Vive Pro I and the Cosmos. So it is interesting times for uh, HTC. For sure, interesting times for HTC. Um, you know what I like? I like that Giants belt buckle. That's pretty boss. Yeah. Was there some uh, some things on there? I didn't get a chance to check it out. No, it just had a or... crown on it. it. It was like a, a big Texas-style belt buckle with a crown on it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm kind of yeah. curious of what all this is going on. You see all the little um, it's counting how many people you're killing or something. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. This just looks different, man. All right. So as the story goes, you've awoken from a nice deep slumber 
only to find hordes of tiny people attacking you for no reason other than the fact that you're a giant. Mm. So, naturally, you do what any giant would do in this situation. You use your hands to start dispersing them, picking them up, and seeing how far they can fly. Uh, good Goliath is styled around wave-based tower defense gameplay, with you being the tower. You'll have to deal with a range of enemies from pitchfork-wielding villagers and cavalry-mounted soldiers to flying devilish imps. You can use anything within reach as a weapon, grab a barrel flying through the air and fling it straight back, or use the villagers' pitchforks against them. Mm. Uh, again, sounds like arcade fun, right? Yeah, yeah, it definitely... Uh... Definitely sounds like fun. Definitely looks unique and um, looks like one of those games that uh, you could almost make fun of until you play it. And then you're like, this is actually pretty good. So, Right. Well, that's kind of the vibe I got from it when I read it. I, I read it and I thought, oh, this sounds <laughs> like the bottom of the Viveport barrel. But then I looked at it and then I read on. And uh, so a full campaign here, Roots, nine levels. Each world culminates in a standoff against a monstrous boss, which can sometimes even be larger than you are. Uh, there will also be formidable mini-bosses and colossal monsters to contend with, from fire-tossing flying witches to boulder-throwing giants. So you have a full campaign here, like any good arcade game, honestly. Uh, it seems like, again... Like this is something they've been working on for a while. Yeah, yeah, it's unique, and it uh, definitely, definitely. The only thing I don't like about it, you know, I mean, we bitch about wave shooters all the time, is anything that's got the word wave in it. I'm suspect, but um, this looks like a different type of wave. Except so. for the wave. Except for the wave. Oh, I, that's true. I I love the wave. So just prove myself wrong in that statement. But uh, no, nah, I, I I it definitely looks like a game that. Um, Hopefully it'll be not too expensive, but um, it looks intriguing. So it's like something I want to yeah. be a part of. Yeah, it looks like one of those that's just fun. You know, sometimes, you know, we can explain away why a game would be good or not good. And sometimes you just see it and you can just tell that it's fun. And that's what this looks like. It looks like it's just fun. I'll tell you what, when I was watching the, the trailer the first time before I read anything about it, I thought, man everybody fucking hates this giant man everybody is coming again i mean that's literally the thing man everybody wants this guy dead and um and then i get to be that guy i don't want to die wes i'm gonna have to fight back uh, kill these sounds guys like sounds like bullying to me Rich. yeah <laughs> yeah just because i'm big man can't help it yeah. bigotry and bullying yeah makes me angry <laughs> <laughs> yeah. suitable for standing or seated gameplay along along all the arcade action there will be special objectives to unlock and secrets to find so a uh, little extra something in there for replayability as well yeah yeah i'm down let's do it i'm down as well um yeah spring 2020 not that long to wait good goliath coming this spring all right, Roots, I think that's the last of the new games we have to talk about. So let's talk about a few that we have talked about before. Let's talk about Final Assault. Uh, we've already talked about Final Assault on more than one occasion. A solid game, uh, maybe the best of its type in VR. And now the PlayStation VR community is going to get to find that out for themselves because Phaser Lock Interactive has just announced that Final Assault VR will be making its way to PlayStation VR. The game is going to support, this is important Roots, PvP cross-platform between PSVR and PCVR and the developer has indicated that the actual release date will come later this month. Wow, that's quick. Yeah, it's actually a really good game. For this type of game, it's one of the better ones I've played. Uh, it's very um it's very easy to pick up right you know and yeah just I, I even for me just one of the the planes right there man just controlling them zipping them around and watching everything move i don't know it, to me it, it was it almost felt like 
you know, you're a kid and you're watching your army people come to life. I mean, it just was really um, done very well. There's something about looking at things in VR on this scale. Uh, I don't know. Something about it makes the 3D really pop, doesn't it? Yeah, no, I just, I equate it. It brings you back, man. It's like, you know, when you're a kid and you had your your two figures of Star Wars characters and you, you're doing all sorts of shit in your mind, man. But now you're in the game and you're, you know, you're seeing all your army men flying around and running. Like you get up close and you can watch all the troops running along. And, and the best thing about this is there's actually strategy. If you are good at um, this type of game, you can, I, I watched my nephew, um, just own it like he's using everything oh well, i'm gonna put this here so it's lobbing shit over to the i mean he's doing everything all the very specifics very first time because he's very good at these type of games i get in there and i'm like why the fuck is my thing keep dying well yeah you've got a somebody shooting artillery shells over and blowing you up you know you need to pay attention bro um so. you know what i'd like for in, in games like this you know, I'm not a, a big RTS fan myself. I'm real time strategy. Uh, I mean, I used to kind of get into it when I was younger, but really not my thing anymore. Uh, but the whole draw of this for me is I'd like to just look at it. I'd like to see it. I think that uh, in a, a multiplayer game like this, uh, a spectator mode would have some value. So like if Roots is taking on Scion or something, uh, Weasel wouldn't mind just being a bystander and watching it go down. That would be pretty cool where you could like, you go to Final Assault and it's got a little window and it says, you know, Scion and Wes are both playing this. You know, do you want to, do you want to spectate? Like, Hell yeah, I want to spectate. And then you can like zoom in, go wherever you want. You know, you could do whatever. That would be pretty cool, right? Although I would submit you'd have to have it a little bit behind. Um just so you couldn't be cheating, you know, because people will right. cheat. They'll go spectate and tell their friend, hey, dude, he's doing this, or I don't even know. I don't know what you could, how you could do that, but uh, I don't know. To me, this is the the benefit of this. This game is so good. The scale looks so good, and just getting up close and watching those little toy soldiers running around, um, it's the closest thing to, to watching um, your toy soldiers come to life, you know, so... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Final Assault, a World War II themed action strategy game that capitalizes on the full power of VR. Uh, command massive ground battles as the skies erupt in dynamic dogfights and bombing runs. Uh, combat requires quick thinking and, facts, and fast reflexes. Fight the battle, win the war. Roots, um,. What really excites me about this is really the larger trend that we're starting to see here uh, when it comes to multiplayer in VR. Uh, people are, these developers are finally starting to realize that it's all about the player base. And there's not a lot of players in VR right now. So when you can make moves like this and make your game into a cross-platform multiplayer game, your, your chances of having a, a successful game that people actively play go way up absolutely do you think this game could um go on a quest you know it's not too graphically intensive uh, I, I was thinking that it is on quest is it oh, on okay. quest i don't okay. know just because what when you were re reading it it said it was going to be um pc versus playstation vr they didn't really mention quest Ooh. at all that um, is true i think it'd be um, uh something that would be good to involve as well and it's an amazing right. game i don't think it's on quest maybe it is if if it is let us know in the comments but uh, uh, we're gonna ask google in real time here because i'm yeah. thinking that this is either on quest or being developed for quest question so, is if it's being developed for quest will it come out on quest <laughs> yeah that is the question that is the question all right so oculus quest final assault tell me google is this a thing Final Assault on Oculus Rift. We already knew about that. PlayStation VR. Yeah. Oculus Quest support, quote, may be possible. Mm. And that was an article from six months ago. So they were talking about PSVR back then. Uh, 
so they're saying that they may look at Quest after they launch on PSVR. Cool. Yeah, oh. I'm saying I might go to China's Disneyland someday, but it's probably not going to happen. I'm so. saying uh, China number one. China number one. I was telling you, I, I you know I'm watching this my my background, and I it made me want to go to Disneyland China, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. It makes me a little sad. Yeah, yeah. you'll never get to go to Disney Rand. Yeah, Disney Rand. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um. So yeah, uh, awesome, awesome move on the uh, on the part of these devs. Always helps to expand your multiplayer base as large as you possibly can, and that's exactly what the developers of Honor and Duty D Day are about to do, as they are bringing the PlayStation VR exclusive over to PC via. Five port roots. Wow. So I mean, if if you're going to expand your player base, uh, and you want to keep as many active players in it as possible, what a better way to do it? Not only by bringing it to PC, but by bringing it to a subscription service on PC makes a lot of sense to me. What about you? Yeah, for sure. And you know one one thing about this game that you may not know, and yeah, maybe you do. I don't know. It's actually really good, man. It for. As what it look, you look at it and you think it just doesn't. The graphics aren't that amazing, you know. It's very basic, but it's thirty two players multiplayer, man. And there's a lot of shit going on, um, and it's actually a really good, uh, a really good um, game for sure. So yeah, the, they support uh, they support large maps, lots of weapons, uh, vehicle combat, and up to thirty two players at a time in it. That's a pretty uh, uh, those are pretty impressive features and the fact that it does so and it does it smoothly is pretty impressive. Yeah, let me ask you this. Another question that we just went through a second ago. Um, do you think this comes to Quest because it's more player base and you can't tell me this is going to be too too graphically intensive. Um, and uh, what an amazing game because like PC's already got War Dust. We already have... It's actually 32 versus 32, 64. Um, so, you know, Quest doesn't have anything like that. So I think it would be a pretty good game for Quest as well. What do you think? Uh, I think it absolutely could. Uh, I think certainly the version that you're looking at here um, could be uh, run on Oculus Quest. With that said, uh, they've either they just uh, released a pro patch update for the graphics or they're about to in the mm. next week or two. Wow, so, now you're making uh, it's me want to go. I want to go back in now. Yeah, so it's going to look better. Um, the, the thing I already, always liked about this game was the uh, the flexibility. You know, you can you can play it how you want. Uh, like I said, there's lots of weapons in it, and the cool thing about playing this one on PlayStation is it supports every controller simultaneously. You can light up all of your controllers and physically holster your move controllers in your pockets and like pair them to pistols and then hold a rifle that's your, your aim controller and then have your dual shock be another kind of weapon. You can literally activate all that stuff and use it all at the same time. That's crazy. Yeah, this is definitely one of the games that I love to play with my aim controller. So um, if you get it on PC VR, you might be tempted to use a gun stock. But no, it's 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 very well. Like I said, it doesn't look like the most graphically challenged game, uh, challenging game, but it is uh it's done very well. Yeah, and a, a different approach, right? For these guys to bring their game to PC, but you know, all I, I mean, maybe it's coming to Steam and Oculus, but the only thing that I've heard of is that it's coming to Viveport. Wouldn't it be weird if this turned out to be a Viveport exclusive? Wouldn't it be weird if we start seeing more? Because um, this is another PlayStation VR game that's came to an exclusive platform, right? We it's not Epic, but it's Vive Port. It might just be on Vive, and that might be the smartest way for P for Sony to come into the PC market. You know, because they're directly competing with um, Oculus. So yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense what you're saying there, Roots. Um, but honestly, if, uh, if 
I'd be surprised. I, I'd be surprised if uh, this weren't just. I mean, if it is an exclusive for Viport, uh, I would imagine it's timed. Uh, I gotta imagine that not only this comes to Steam and Oculus, but like you said, the Oculus Quest as well. Because if you're gonna sell VR games, why not sell them to the on the platform where you know all the people are, right? Yeah, especially for a multiplayer, you want to get as many the biggest pool you can, and especially when it's 32 people. You know, because there will be a lot of uh, computers in there, but I'd rather have 32 real people. It gets chaotic in there. There's a lot of shit going on, so. Yeah, and again, I mean, this is a pretty good pickup for PC just to have a uh, this type of game with players in the server because they already have people that play this game every day on PlayStation, right? So now that community... Uh, gets to come over into a PC release. So it's kind of a, I mean, other than like Onward and, and Pavlov, I mean, how many guarantees of, of uh, a fairly active server do you have in VR multiplayer? Yeah, not that many. Although in uh, Wardust is pretty good. You get, you know, you'll get a good mix of real people and, uh, and NPCs as well, or, you know, computers. So uh, talk about a disaster. Wardust on PlayStation was just a, uh, a train wreck yes i didn't even know did it it didn't do too well huh well they they had to remove the multiplayer from it it's mm. like a, a single player versus ai thing yeah no that's not not good for me yeah yeah just a shell of what it is on pc but anyway uh you know viveport you know we joke about it from time to time but the the fact of the matter is, and we say it often, it's it's the best deal in VR. And if you're new to VR and don't have a lot of uh, games to play, you know, Viport Infinity is a no-brainer. Uh, six new games coming in March. Honor and Duty D-Day, one of them. Uh, we're also getting Memoria, Stories of Lagarma, which is kind of a... It's not really a game. It's kind of an art piece. Uh, and I've talked to you privately a lot about how Vive's really good about keeping this art and video type stuff on Viveport. There's a lot of this kind of thing on there. Uh, they're also bringing over Soul Axiom Rebooted by Wells Interactive. We've talked about this game two or three weeks in a row on our show now and about how cool it looks, how fairly priced it is, and now, you know, we don't even have to go drop the 12 bucks on it, Roots, because here uh, shortly... It's going to be available via Viveport. We're going to get to try it out as a part of our subscription. Nice. We get to try out an enjoyably slick slick adventure, according to the the description there. It looks good, and it's funny. And you were like you were saying, you're like, I can't believe we're going to get to try this, you know, for free. And and uh, this, and I mean, I was blown away by this news, honor and duty. Like, um, that's Viveport's the one thing that HTC seems to be doing right um everything else they are fucking it up i don't understand they got the opposite of the midas touch so i don't know yeah yeah viveport uh and you know it, it amazes me how they're able to lure all these games on the on the infinity because you know you know, they're cutting themselves out of sales by doing that if somebody has an infinity subscription they're not going to go buy these games now um and the way they get paid is by playtime. Mm. So it, it really just depends on how much the player plays the game as to how much the uh, developers make for publishing on Infinity. Yeah, I guess as time goes by and more the the pool of players in Infinity get bigger, um, they start making more money and it becomes a little bit more profitable. So, right. Well, actually, it makes a lot of sense for uh, like uh, Honor and Duty with a multiplayer game. People play that stuff constantly, right? Yeah, and then like you said, you know, you got a whole base of people that it costs nothing to get into. Why not jump in there? So, right. uh, Stumper by Thirteenth Floor is coming to Viport. This is a rhythm game uh, that I have heard of. I mean, it's not one of the big rhythm releases, but I have heard of Stumper. Uh, the Morgan by the Pixel Mine. You know, the Morgan just came out of early access not long ago. Uh, a lot of people say the Morgan's pretty solid. You played the Morgan, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. This was one of those games. I was just thinking uh, back when Alex and and um, 
and Mame Fam, I think Alex was on the show. Mame Fam may have been, but I know I um had was saying how much I liked it and um and was suggesting everybody look at it and I was the only one that did, but uh um it's just really good. It was it's it's just done very well. And uh um I need to go back into it since they brought it out at early access. Cool looking art style. Um looks like something that could possibly port to quest what, what do you think about that yeah i think it'd easily go to quest and it's done very well it's a good a dungeon crawler and they don't have that many dungeon crawlers on the quest so i mean i don't want to piss any playstation vr people off but i think it'd be nice if it came to the quest yeah uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah you know it never ceases to amaze me how much uh of a difference good lighting can make to a game because you see these blocky graphics in a lot of games. What really sets the good looking ones apart from the, the crappy looking ones is the lighting. It's always the lighting. And that's what the Morgan has here. That That's why it looks so cool is because the lighting's done so well. It is. It is. And it's got some pretty good mechanics as far as like some of the, the things that are fighting. And um, I definitely think it's worth picking up and, and trying. Looks like um, Gauntlet VR or something like that. Uh, I'd love a real good gauntlet VR. I know that they've done like, you know, the samples or whatever demos or whatever came out a while ago, but uh, I used to love that game as a, as a kid, you know? Yeah, me too. Who didn't love gauntlet? I mm. mean, a thousand levels that game. Yeah. <laughs> Seemed like it had a thousand levels, right? Well, who was your favorite um, character? Mine was the elf. I had to be elf every time. I'd be pissed I, if I somebody just, else picked I, it. I didn't. I didn't play it that much. That to, to, I, I just played with. Uh, you know, I played with all of them probably equally. To be honest, man, it's like moving fast. I the my least favorite was Warrior because they throw that slow ass axe. Yeah, I don't have patience for that shit. And my, my whole draw to that game was just the the sheer volume of enemies in it. I, I I used to love that type of thing. Yeah, well, what was cool is you had, it was like when you could get like three of your friends and you had all four of you on the arcade game and it was like chaos and it just got, it was cool. I And it was another one of those games, like you said, where you were pumping quarters for like hours, you know, yeah. if you had them. So well, that was the cool thing about it, right? Is you could play forever in that game as long as you had the money, right? Yep. Yeah. A thousand levels. Uh, also, Music Escape coming to round out the six titles to buy port infinity bet you can't guess what music escape is roots yeah no. is it <laughs> is it an escape yes. room where i'm doing uh uh rhythm game it's a rhythm game it's another uh, rhythm game just like stumper um uh, music escape uh features ninja and cyberpunk weaponry it said and uh the ability to port in your own music which is always cool i just don't no man somebody was telling me that they bought just bought synth writers and something else that they look when i watched the videos they look the same and uh i still submit we have too many too many uh rhythm games i would tend to agree but that's only because it's really not my genre um but i will say this about synth writers uh quite a following that game has you know we made fun of it when it was released for not being very original people People are really digging on synth riders, man. Yeah, well, I have to try it, I guess. But I, I just, um, Nautica's just so good, man. Just good, it's the best yeah. ever. Agreed. All right. So anyway, that that's uh, six new titles. Three of them notably awesome, and uh, the big news coming out of the Viveport Infinity releases for this month. Again, Honor and Duty D Day, no brainer of a move. Uh, Best of luck to Strange Games Studios in their move over to the uh, interesting world of PC VR. Let me ask you this. Do you think it really is a trend of, I mean, it's it seems to me, and we've mentioned it before, but I, I really do believe Sony, within the last year, made a decision to start bringing over titles to PC to double dip to, to compete against because it's this isn't the first one and we've had several and um i think it's going to continue and i i believe and i know people keep writing it off but i think re7 is coming to pc vr and i think it's coming soon that's that's my i'm going to put that out there now that's my um 
predicament or predicament that's my that's my guess that's my uh I, i'm gonna put it out there now because i i just makes sense to me they've they've made all the money that they're gonna make off of it and um it's it just keeps dropping in price for playstation vr and um and yeah i just think it's coming so. well uh at this rate uh it'll only be two years from now before we get resident evil 7 remake yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because right? they do two of them a year yeah <laughs> they're, they're gonna run out of remakes pretty soon uh you, you know i'd love we've said it man time and time again i'd love to see that happen i'd love to see uh what has long been my favorite game uh up until this past january uh i'd love to see it with a powerful machine behind it uh i'm not so hot on the idea anymore uh, because I know PS5 is coming, and I know I'm going to get to see it on that. So, uh, you know, uh, not that big of a deal to me anymore. But, uh, you know, I'd still like to see it. I, I'd, I'd play it. I'd play through it again tomorrow if it uh, were to just surprisingly be dropped into the uh, PC version. Well, think how huge it would be for all those index players that came in for Half-Life Alex to have a... a title like resident evil drop in vr um because it's such a huge title and it would i just think it'd be smart it'd be smart for vr and and for the the company but you know what does roots know so. yeah i agree i agree all right roots one more story one more game to talk about it's another one we've spoken about recently semi-recently on this show boiling steel has now left early access uh the vr adventure action title uh exited early access saturday yesterday on steam and mirowin is also going to release the title on the oculus store in uh within weeks so in the full version players have many new features to check out and they have a laundry list of stuff here roots i'm not going to read off uh, the entire list a lot of it was available in the uh, early access version but uh, they have also added notably a new final part to the game with 10 additional maps and uh, about an extra hour of gameplay they've also added in non-story missions that are randomly generated to make each playthrough unique uh, so they're, they're doing a lot here for the value proposition for prospective players uh, as well as replayability. Um, you know, this game came out in the uh, in the footprint and shadow of Stormland. And even uh, in the shadow of that game, while it may not have got the credit and the attention that it deserved, uh, we played it and I, for one, really enjoyed my time in it. Yeah. Yeah, I did too. And actually, I'm kind of psyched to go back into it and check it out again because I want to see, um, you know, the new new stuff that they've added and uh, get a little bit further as well. So I think I might go back in. Yeah, well, that's the cool thing about um, VR games and indie VR games, uh, for that matter. If you've got a good dev like Mirowin, uh if you take a six month break or a three month break off of any game from a good developer and you go back in, you, you always immediately notice the extra polish and shine that it has on it. And especially when you're talking about something like this, that was a brand new early access title when we played it. Uh, I got to imagine as good as it was then, it's going to be even better now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, is it going to be good enough to get Drillo in there? Because I know he's already said he's not going in. No, nah, man, the trailer was enough for him, bro. He already knows. It's done. It's done deal. One person that will go in there is Alex because he was saying that uh, um, it's out of early access. So, you know, that's his deal. Is any early access games are off limits. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'm kind of psyched to, to see the end, end result as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um you know for for what it is uh, a very unique concept for a game wasn't it? i mean you're off on this mining planet you have no weapons to fight with you're fighting with mining equipment and of course the mining equipment 
has been designed to be weapons, you know. But uh, it, it's cool. At least they're trying something uh, new, a new idea, right? Just looks really good as well, and the gameplay feels good. So, yeah, and underrated hands. You know, when we were talking about the Jerry Rice Award. Uh, Boiling Steel, again, in the shadow of uh, Stormland, who won. But uh, not bad-looking robot hands in this game. No, they look really good. Looks like, uh, you know, robot hands, you know, uh, or, or robots in general, tend to look pretty good in, in VR just because you can really, uh, you can fine-tune all that those details. So, Yeah, uh, definitely looking, at, uh, looking forward to, to getting back in this game uh an interesting story that uh, i'd kind of honestly like to know where the story goes with this one uh they took a long time introducing you to the game right it's like a, you play an hour or something right before you really even get started yeah yeah now you got an extra hour added on top um with all the extra levels so that's kind of cool i wonder how long it ends up making the game overall uh, that's a good question. I, I kind of got the feeling that this was a pretty a pretty long game. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be 20 hours or anything. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this one goes 8 to 10. Yeah. Cool. So what's the cost on it? I can't remember. I think this is uh, Infinity think, as well, right? Or no? Uh, well, again, we're going to answer this in real time, Roots. Uh, I was thinking that it launched around 20 bucks. I can tell you that uh, to celebrate the milestone that the game is currently uh, enjoying a 20% price cut on Steam. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, you can pick it up. Uh, well, I mean, I guess if we're going to talk about it, we need to know exactly how much it costs, right? Yeah, 20% uh, off of 75 If it $20, it would be 16 but... We don't know that. We need to make sure. Because I was thinking like maybe they even cut the price on it after they launched it. But maybe that's just my screwed up brain getting confused Tired. by the thousands of VR games that we talk about. Yeah. Boiling Steel. fifteen ninety nine roots. Uh, okay, so probably normally that, 20 That is, yeah, that's the sale price. Um, so, yeah, normally 20 bucks, $16. So... Wes is mine not playing tricks on him. And uh we'll sharp as ever. That's right, dude. You can't phase me. Mm. It doesn't matter if I sleep. I don't need sleep, bro. Rest of, yeah, you don't need sleep, man. This is the, the age of AI, dude. Just plug your head in real quick and <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I can't remember the name of the uh the elected AI. What was the Webby. Yeah, Webby. Webby. Yeah, thank God for Webby. Boiling Steel is indeed a Vive Port Infinity. I was going to say, I could have sworn that's how we tried it, but I'm not sure. I can't remember. Yeah. I, I never know. remember, I man. I, I thought that one game was Vive Port Infinity, and it turned out it was in my inventory. So I had got it on Steam. I just, for like you said, so many games, so many developers, and uh, it just gets confusing sometimes. So uh, I searched to see if Soul Axiom was available yet on Viveport, and it's not yet. Mm. But uh, just in typing that in, uh, Viveport is suggesting to me the Museum of Other Realities, mm. Wands, Synth Riders, Carly and the Reaper Man, Bizarre Barber, and the <laughs> Ultimate Fishing Simulator. Wow, man, that's a just that's a whole plethora of games that have nothing to do with each other each one of them is totally different um very bizarre but my whole, my whole point with that is though is how many good games are on here now i mean there's freaking tons of games on this thing now yeah it's, it's crazy man like who you can now thought? play conductor was it somebody was talking about conductor alex. recently oh was not alex? recently i know he, he's he was the one that really liked it back in the day yeah, well, you can play that on here now as well. Yeah, there's a lot of good games, man. I mean, Bizarre Barber, dude, you know. Oh, Nostos is on here. Oh, that's not Infinity, though. Too I need to bad, go back bro. into Nostos. I'm scared to go into the Nostos because they, you know, somebody had asked on Reddit what the deal was with the updates, and uh, I'd looked into it, and uh, they've pretty much said that the updates are dried up for right now because of coronavirus, and that game has so much potential 
and but it was so janky dude um it scares me to go back because it'll remind me of my money that just floated out the window all right Rich. so here here we are on the the second page of viveport infinity titles uh we've got curious tale of the stolen pets o shape a fisherman's tale battle wake groundhog day like father like son to the top organ quarter audio trip fuji pagan peak vr ninja legends loco dojo gloomy eyes and swords of gargantua wow and that's what just got added no this is just stuff that they have dude. oh on this that is... second page okay yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's all stuff that, I, you know, a lot of stuff on there that I, I mean, I still, I wanted to check out Swords of Gargantua, but I never did, so. Yeah, they had a big update uh, recently, and uh, Swords of Gargantua, I want to say it's coming to PlayStation, like, fairly soon. Be a good good uh, Monday show um, segment, right? Five Port Infinity games or okay. something of that nature. You know? Not until they pay for my subscription. Bro. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they better get that shit going too. Because I, I, I'll do, I'll do a Viveport segment once a month if they want to pay for it. Yeah, you know, that's we can review Viveport monthly releases, no problem. Let's get to it, HTC. Chop chop. You yeah. know, honestly, uh, I've been, you know, I got a contact from uh, a Viveport contact recently, and I just haven't. <laughs> sent that email yet so who yeah. knows maybe this is a be an upcoming segment on the virtual strangers channel yeah yeah sounds good to me me as well so that's going to wrap it up folks what did you think if you liked it be sure to give us a thumbs up and if you didn't like it be sure to give it a thumbs down uh be sure to leave a comment down below and be sure if you haven't already to join our discord roots uh it's all vr all day long in there right yeah and it's actually getting a lot of people in there recently um to play games looking for group uh actually posted in reddit today and had like three or four people just because the guy was looking for groups um and i said hey you know come into our our discord check it out and yeah uh, and then there's the uh the because i said so channel where the viewers can tell us what they want us to play and talk about yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you want Wes to play some game that you know he hates and watch him talk about it, that's that, that's what that's for. <laughs> or if you've heard us talk about a game that you know is good and we've like, you know, we've talked about Doctor Who a couple times and we keep talking about going back into it and never do, but maybe you know that this game is worth it and Roots, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. We'll make Roots go in and play it and then he'll tell you why it sucks. Maybe. Yeah absolutely that's why because i said so's there yep anyway join the discord subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and if you have make a friend subscribe yeah. i'm not saying suggest it i'm saying do what you have to do to get it done <laughs> we're about to cross the 700 threshold on our way to a thousand only you can make it happen your life depends on it Yep. act like it only you can prevent forest fires too so let's do it let's get it done subscribe or i will give you coronavirus <laughs> yeah yeah you don't want that it's not good nobody wants that Ruth. No. wash your hands with warm soap and water yep anyway with that said folks we'd like to thank you all for watching and for roots i'm wes we'll see you tomorrow friends bye bye take it easy